Shout out to the young man for standing up to not only Hillary Clinton, but the entire federal government. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan. And today we got to talk about a young man heckling Hillary Clinton while she was giving a talk at Columbia University about human rights. Now, this was fantastic because he's speaking about a thing that many of us uh, should kind of focus on, which is the impending World War Three. Joe Biden is asking for over 100 billion with a B dollars to not just Israel, not just Ukraine, but also Taiwan. And these are the three hot spots where you can spark a world war. If we were to invade Russia because of the Ukraine kerfuffle, that's going to start World War Three. If we were to invade China because of the Taiwan thing and the South China Sea, that would spark World War Three. If we put boots on the ground in Israel and try to fight the entire Middle East, that's also going to spark World War Three. And nobody is talking about it. Now, before we get to the fantastic heckling protest from the young man, let's get into a little bit of information about this aid package that I'm speaking about. And if you want to see this in full without my commentary link, as always, will be in the box. But check out the headline. Biden seeks one hundred and five billion for Ukraine, Israel, Taiwan and the quote unquote border, which it won't be used for that. But let's watch some of this video right here. Then we're going to get to the protest. Congress has it. Hey, Eamon. That's right, Carl. The grand total here is $105 billion. That's the request from the Biden administration to Capitol Hill for new aid to Israel and to Ukraine. The senior administration officials breaking down the details inside that request for reporters over the past uh, few minutes. Here's what we know so far. They're asking for $61.4 billion for Ukraine. $14.3 billion for Israel. There's another piece in here that's going to be humanitarian assistance. Uh, that's going to be $9.15 billion. Officials on the call not giving a lot of breakdown here as to how much of that is going to Gaza, how much of that is going to Ukraine, but that's the humanitarian assistance figure overall. Interestingly, $2 billion in this request for the Indo-Pacific region. That includes Taiwan, uh, obviously another hot spot that the president sort of alluded to a little bit last night. Uh, border operations here in the United States that request is six point four billion dollars is so there's more to this but you get the general idea now let's go ahead and cut to the protest from the young man where he's saying hey what's going on we're trying to start a world war in each of these three locations and nobody's talking about it without further ado let's go ahead and roll it Struck by the hypocrisy I'm sorry, of this. Two more I, I can't, to hear from. I'm sorry. You, you have a the, chance. Well, the, I'm not sorry. The, the hip, you sit down. I, I know you're not sorry. People, That's the point. The hypocrisy of this talk. speech. The I'm hypocrisy of the fact that Frank what Gisha. what do you have? Can Frank you please Gisha can you is can you please a make a statement about President Joe Biden's speech? This is a clearly warmongering speech. President Joe Biden is calling for a hundred billion dollars of funding for Israel, Taiwan, and Ukraine, and we're supposed to just bundle these together and pretend like we're going to rush to World War III, and we're all just going to let Hillary Rodham Clinton sir, 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 sit here. And, okay. I'm yes. sorry. You know, yes. this is not, what, what, this is not no, the way no, to have no, a conversation. No, I'm sorry. Want- hey, I love it. Young man, if you're listening to me, you are doing fantastic work. Shout out to you. I have I, a conversation. I, you're no, welcome to come you, talk to you me can, afterwards. You can sit here. Okay, right. You're yeah, gonna you're yeah. gonna you're gonna wait for me, right? I, please, I, will, I, I don't. I do not believe you. I will you. listen to you. And I, do, I will respond. I do to not you. believe you. But Respectfully, right. I do not believe you. Well, and the fact just, of the matter is that the just, American people's voice are what need to be heard. Yeah, because they are being because heard. our president is not speaking for the American people, and well, neither are you. That's your opinion. That's your opinion. Yes, that's my but, opinion. But sure. well, then sit down. We've heard your opinion. Thank you very much. Now we're gonna. Turn I'm not gonna sit down. I'm not gonna stop. I'm not gonna stop working. I'm gonna wait. Human I'm going to exercise my free speech but until it's not, until it's I'm not free speech when you this, are disrupting yes, everybody it is. else's opportunity. It is free speech. Sure. This is free speech, everyone. Sure. This sure. is free speech. Sure. That is not free speech. This is people t- c- constructing narratives that are openly hypocritical. I'm sorry. You the the. Now, people might say, "Well, that's not free speech, ABO." Look, you know what? At this point, I'm not even really worried about it because. Enough is enough, man. People got to stop this nonsense. Somebody got to say something. Somebody's got to stand up and just say, hey, are we just going to do all this funding to all these places? Like somebody's got to actually hold these people accountable. Now, I know Hillary Clinton's not in government, 
she's not in government, but come on. Like, she's involved with the D.C. establishment, the same as anybody else is. All right, so let's not even play games like that. We know what's going on here. Why is she speaking at this panel if she has no power at all? I mean, let's just stop the nonsense. All right, let's let's just understand what's going on, open our eyes, and use our brains for more than a hat rack. Incredible hypocrisy. You, you know, tell me John you actually... Foster Dulles went with Eleanor Roosevelt to bring this Declaration of the Rights of Man. John Foster Dulles was involved with the CIA. Oh, yeah, well, he... you're brilliant in your oh, historical yes. Yes, uh, thank cherry you. And the Pinochet, the Pinochet regime. Uh, please, listen. could you please inform me about the United States okay, involved in these historical to, things? We're going to move right. on Ms. to Clinton, will you denounce Joe Biden? Will you? Point. That man giving him the time out. He's like, oh, oh, stop, stop now. Stop, young man. No, Joe Biden's human speech. Rights. Not Millions just down. yelling about it. Right so, now. Frank, and, I want right. to turn to you, you to because right you are sure from Uganda, and Uganda is 2020. Oh, what are we talking about? The anti-LGBT? Is that what we're going to? We got to just, we're going to pivot away from all the war migraine that Joe Biden's doing. Uh, let's not talk about that. Uh, you guys in Uganda, why don't you like the LGBT? Uh, what, what's going on with that? Meanwhile, we got a whole war or two or three just waging in the background because of your man and your people and your policies. And you just want to totally gloss over that and get to talking about the LGBT? Ridiculous. Criminalizes LGBT war, uh, conduct He's in Uganda. He's trying to push us to World War Three. Oh, Do you please. understand? It's please. not about Israel and Palestine. It's please. not about. It's not football. This isn't football. It's not Team America. Well, I'm sorry, but some of us are on Team America, despite our flaws and our yes, problems. yes, that, that's me. Please sit and down. You're going to have to do something. You can't, you can't take over the event. You have to stop right now. You have to stop. Or what? Wait. I'm going to exercise my breath Every person on this stage has wished their life, their income, right? their reputation, their... Really? How risk their life, their income reputation? Oh, no. Hillary Clinton, uh, you're talking about risking lives. Maybe she didn't allegedly taking some lies I, I might i might say that if we're gonna just throw out all these kind of blanket statements you know that's what i would say i'm not sure about risking our careers and what okay. have you done other than <laughs> right. and i need you to i need you to change yourself Sir, you what has he done this is a young man probably in college i mean come on you're about about to be you know a few feet deep here you understand you about to put two feet in that, that pine box. So let's not even really try to compare that. But what he's doing right now is great. He is standing up for something. He's making the difference. He's using his voice. Okay. And the average person would be afraid to say anything. They would be afraid to speak out because they don't want to get locked up. They don't want to get put on the blacklist. They don't want to have the federal ride legs up the hind parts. They're going to remain quiet. So he's being brave. He's using his ability to speak. He's using his voice to speak out against the things that you guys are saying on stage, which are uh, very dangerous ideas for humanity as a whole, in my humble opinion. You have to, you have to listen to me. Records against you any You're day disrupting your of the year. I'll okay. respond. What I have done is I have asked Hillary Rodham Clinton right. to denounce the president's <laughs> openly <laughs> warmongering, suicidal, idiotic speech. And I'll that's give what you I've my answer. I will that's not what do I've that. done. So that's the end of I, our conversation. Okay, but sure. I'll still meet you outside. Your but you're done. Right now. Okay, you Frank. To, okay. Frank has, has, yeah, my man is brave right there because he knows, I'm sure he knows about the, the history of the Clintons, the, the allegations surrounding the Clintons ever since Arkansas. I'm sure he's aware of what's going on. So shout out to the young man for using his voice. And at the end of the day, you can uh, agree with his stance. You can disagree with him speaking out, interrupting or whatever, being a disruptor. You can agree, disagree, but he raised a valid point. Are we just going to ignore that speech where he's trying to give quote unquote aid money to three different hotspots instigating a potential world war it's, it's not even about religion uh jews or muslims or christians this is about actual the end of the world i mean any of those three hot spots if we make one wrong move it's over for humanity 
this is a really big issue, and I'm glad the young man was pressing the former first lady to address it. Whether she wanted to or not, the point was made. And I think I'll leave that right there for now. And what say you? What's your take on the young man and what he was saying about uh, Joe Biden's speech and all these potential war wars that he may be inciting? Whatever your thoughts are, let me know in the comments below. You guys know where I'm at. Shout out to the young man for doing what needed to be done. Many of us need to just do this. We need to hold our elected officials accountable. We need to hold those who have any kind of power in government. We need to hold them accountable. Let our voices be known and inform the general public about what's going on because the average normie may not understand. They may see the Israel, uh, Hamas, Palestine thing as something about Muslims versus Jews and religious. It, it's it's not even that's just a that's not the way that's not the way it should be looked at. It should be looked at as a potential spot where World War Three could strike. Same thing, Ukraine, Russia. Same thing, China, Taiwan. And if, again, if we make the wrong move in any of those places, it's over for all of us. So all the religion, who's right, who's wrong, tit for tat, all that won't matter in a nuclear holocaust. But whatever your thoughts are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.